Yeah. Oh man. Got me looking. You were. <laughs> they made you do it. <laughs> oh man. Did you get a, you get a purple heart for that or uh, yeah? Awesome. Well, thank you for your service, by the way. Even though you didn't want to. April 3rd. It's, not, it's interesting how certain dates yeah. just. <clears throat> All, right. You guys are ready. All right, David Pace. That's me. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> um, Let's go back to the morning of April 3rd, 1974. What do you remember? Do you remember anything different weather-wise that day? Yeah, I dreaded I had to get up and go to school. <laughs> but it actually was just a normal day, kind of an overcast day, things like that. Sun popped out, just got warm. School let out at 3 o'clock, just like normal. Uh, I happened to be a volunteer firefighter at uh, for Meade County, and we just happened to stop at the firehouse and we were there and the city superintendent stopped by and told us that there was a tornado they were tracking but it looked like it was going to go around i guess this i guess the western side of brandenburg so we didn't think much about it and just kind of hung out in the firehouse just waiting to see what was going to happen if we had to do anything and one of the guys that was on the fire department with us walked to the doorway Looked and it looked like a, a blank wall coming right down the street. So he hollered. We ran out. Went the next door was City Hall. I think that was my old payback that we went next door, kicked the basement door in, and I'll never forget that. Uh, I'll be clean this up for what he really said, but mm -hmm. he said Barney Johnson's going to kick our tail mm -hmm. <laughs> but and luckily we were in that basement and that saved our lives to be honest so everything around us was completely destroyed so the house we were in collapsed and just a miracle wow. okay um that was a lot so let's go back you're at the firehouse first of all you're senior in high school i'm sorry you're a senior in high school and then volunteering at the fire department just happened to be there so describe where the where the fire station was and where you took shelter again where, where's the lo this location it's actually right on high street here in brandenburg just uh, just a, two blocks from where we are right now and actually city hall was rebuilt there and i guess that's where i'm paying back to the city for tearing their door up being mayor so <laughs> from a second term describe the tornado what did you see what did you remember what did you he hear what did you feel it was kind of like Tony and Amanda both. Well, I mean, we, I didn't know what a tornado really meant, to be honest. I mean, 18 years old, I didn't care about the weather a lot. Uh, but, you know, we just ran and went next door. When we got in, fortunately, so we could hear stuff starting to hit the building. And we started hearing people upstairs of the city hall. So we were able to help them get from upstairs to the basement. And I guess that kind of kept us busy is the first part. And then it got so loud and dust falling through the floors. And then uh, just the wind, as you could hear everything breaking, and then total silence for, it seemed like forever. But we were in the eye. We assumed that's what it was, not knowing enough about it. But I guess I paid a little attention in school to understand that part. But it was, uh, we just waited. And then the back part of the storm really was what tore everything up. But to us, it was the backlash that tore that house, twisted it completely, two-story house, spun it completely on the foundation and just dropped most of it in the back corners. And you know, luckily where the doorway we were going to get out is, uh, was, was saved where we could get out. And when we walked out, it just wasn't anything. When we went in, all the buildings were four foot tall and uh, people were injured and luckily thank goodness the electricity was knocked out or been probably been more people because all the wires and stuff you were just walking on everything you didn't know what to do everybody was in shock and there were people with no clothes on were in showers that were injured and we tried to help them and i got to my parents home which is 
a mile from the heart of Brandenburg. They were sitting in the house and didn't know a thing had happened. So it's how quickly it went through. Okay. Let's go back to you were taking shelter and I want to slow down right here when that tornado is occurring and give me as, with as much detail as possible what you were hearing, what you were seeing and what you were feeling. Well, the first part of it was the stuff, the, just the wind, like um, it got to blowing so hard, you could hear this stuff crashing against the house. You just, you didn't know what it was being in the basement. The windows were, were there, you were tall enough, you couldn't see out very well, but it just then stuff started getting so dark that, and then I uh, kind of like this, I, I never really thought it was sounded like a train, but we were pretty busy at that time trying to help those other folks to get to the basement. And it, uh, it, it was pretty, you know, loud. You could hear those people were screaming, trying to get downstairs and that stuff, you know, you live with forever. So it was, it was a thing you never forget. So, yeah. So when you got out, you said the door was okay so you could exit and you saw what had happened to your town. What was going through your mind and what were you feeling? I I wondered what, I, first thing you think about is your family. I mean, I thought, what the world? My, my, we live near the river, so I thought, well, my family's in the river, or I just didn't know what to do. So my vehicle was totaled right there at the firehouse. It was just pieces, all the windows broke out of it, just torn up a million pieces. And so I ran up to the high school where I found some friends that actually took me home. When you got closer, you could see it was anything so then my parents and i we came back to find family members like amanda and different ones and the family that i was kind of raised with with the duncans who lived downtown and we uh we just hunted for everybody we knew and it was something you never forget what you saw so yeah no doubt well what did you see uh and what do you remember from the days that followed, um, the memorial at the high school, um, all the cleanup in between and after. What do you remember? The hardest part was seeing the, I think, the freezer trucks at the old ballpark, and the, you know, it was just so many people came together to try to make it better. We, I had an old pickup truck that was a just an old truck and. It ran, we, every day we helped somebody try to get their stuff that they could save. And that old truck, mm -hmm. I remember the last day we had the last person we thought we were helping, the clutch and everything went out of it. I think it knew we were done. And so it was kind of a, it was a long couple of weeks to helping people trying to salvage what they owned. You mentioned the freezer truck. What that was, was that for? That became the morgues. So. And then. What were you, what, I mean, as an 18 year old, you probably hadn't experienced death or you hadn't seen death that close. What type of impact did that have? Well, it's lasting impression. So I, I tease about this. I, I became a meteorologist after that. Never had any training, but I, I'm the one that stays up. My family goes to bed and I warn everybody the storm's come. And so it's been a, something you never get over, so. Well, as the mayor of Brandenburg today, you still have kind of that responsibility to look after your flock. We stand here in a pretty state-of-the-art emergency operations center. Is this town ready for, for the next one? Well, I think we're so, we've come so far, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a gentleman by the name of Ron Dotson. Dedicated his life to this community for, he never wanted people to be not prepared and he did a great job of trying to get us the equipment we needed he really you know and he struggled with his eyesight things like that but they never deterred him from being on top of stuff he would call he better be watching for this with me working at the electric co-op he would give me head up after that fact when i went there and he was just a friendship and a bond that we helped the community. And today we did a test yesterday on all of our sirens and uh, for the tornado warnings. And unfortunately, we had two that did not work. And mm -hmm. so they had just been moved recently and reinstalled. So hopefully they were fixed last night that, so that you never want anybody else not be prepared. So. 
absolutely. Um, what are your final thoughts? Looking back at that event, how it changed your life or how it changed the community's life? Well, I just still think of the family members that have never gotten over it. You know, they lost loved ones. And I started trying to think of people to help to for you to be able to interview. And it really is a, kind of a sad that the number of people that it took to make the Brandenburg come back. And Meade County, it's not just the city. It was a long stretch. And, you know, it was just those, a lot of those folks aren't here any longer. So we try to pass that knowledge on to the younger folks that are my children, some of them, they they just don't realize that they see pictures of Maysville, different communities that are hit by Tony and say, man, that's bad. Well, that was here. You know, you just don't realize what we went through to make Brandenburg back where it is today. We were stymied for a while because of the damage that was here. And, you know, hey, my job, one of my jobs was recruiting companies. I don't ever mention 1974 to them very often. So, you know, it's just something that hopefully my first, my, jump back a little bit, and then I was mayor in 2007, 14 days into office, had a tornado in Brandenburg. Well, everybody wanted to compare that to 1973, and it wasn't a drop in the bucket to what that was. And that, But we were better prepared. I think that's, we did see that, that mm -hmm. people, the technology and cell phones today can tell you anything, and that's the, hopefully those warnings will keep people alive in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for keeping this alive, too, by the way. Oh, you're very welcome. Any final thoughts there, Mayor? Ah, thanks for doing it, but mm -hmm. hopefully we don't ever have it again. That'll be the best thing ever happened. So. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, thanks, David. Right. We appreciate it. Nice job. <clears throat>